Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about special right triangles. So there's two different types of triangles that we're gonna be focusing on today. The first one is a 45, 45, 90, and the second one is a 30, 60, 90. And so we're gonna learn that there's actually some special relationships between the sides and the hypotenuse of these two different types of triangles. And just by using this special relationship, we're gonna be able to actually solve for a missing leg or a hypotenuse pretty quickly. So first, if I gave you this triangle and I said it's a 45, 45, 90, which definitely means it's isosceles, um, and it means that the two legs are congruent to each other, what's the value of the hypotenuse? So we're going to figure out the value of the hypotenuse and relate it back to the leg N. So if I then said, okay, well, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? The Pythagorean theorem works for any right triangle. I would say, all right, well, then N squared plus N squared. So the square of the first leg plus the square of the second leg should be equal to whatever c squared is. Well, let's see where this now brings us. You know, what is c, the hypotenuse, actually equal to? So n squared plus n squared is 2n squared. And so now let's say I wanted to solve for c. So right now we have c squared, but if I wanted to get c by itself, I would have to take the square root. And so if I took the square root on both sides, we know the square root of a squared symbol, well, that just simplifies each other out. So now we're actually left with the square root of 2 and the square and then n. Because think about this. I really, the square root of 2n squared means the square root of 2 times the square root of n squared, which we know the square root of n squared is just n. And so the hypotenuse c is actually the square root of 2 times n, which is n root 2. We can call it n times the square root of 2, n root 2, it means the same thing. So here's actually the relationship, which is pretty cool. What this is saying is if the legs of, the, of a 45, 45, um, 90 triangle are 5, then the way you get the hypotenuse is just to do n times radical 2. And so the hypotenuse is just 5 radical 2. And that's how it's going to work, which is really cool. So to go from a leg to a hypotenuse, we're just going to simply multiply by radical 2. Now think about this, if I gave you a hypotenuse, I said the hypotenuse is five radical two, and I asked you to go to a leg, well, to go from a five radical two just by five, we'd have to divide by a radical two. Okay, so that's a key piece of information that we need to know. Going from a leg to hypotenuse, we multiply by radical two. Going from hypotenuse back to leg would actually be to divide by radical two. So let's take a look at some really quick practice problems then. These are definitely 45, 45, 90s because we have an isosceles right triangle. And so if my legs are three, then my hypotenuse is simply just three radical two. If I'm given the legs are 5.5, then the hypotenuse is 5.5 radical two. That's it, you just take the leg and multiply it by radical two. Okay, but now if I give you the hypotenuse, and when you go from the hypotenuse back to the leg, instead of multiplying by radical two, we now need to divide by radical two. So I would take the hypotenuse of five, divide it by radical two, and now this should bring back some memories from algebra one, rationalizing a denominator. We cannot have a radical in the denominator as a simplified final answer. So we need to go ahead and multiply it by a unit of one made up of that radical. So radical two over radical two. Then remember we multiply straight across. So five times radical two becomes five radical two. Radical two times radical two would be radical four. And the square root of four is two. And so this is my result. I can call it five radical two over two. I can call it 2.5 radical two. Either one is okay. Same thing here. If I'm given the hypotenuse and I wanna go backwards and find the leg, I have to take the hypotenuse of three radical two and now divide it by radical two. Now this one actually works out really friendly for us because the radical two simplify out and it actually just means the leg is three. Okay, here I'm given the leg. So to go from the legs to the hypotenuse, we multiply by radical two. So I would take a leg of five radical five, multiply it by radical two, and now just remember you multiply the coefficients. So five and the one is five, and then radical five times radical two is radical 10. And in this case, you can't simplify radical 10, and that is actually just our answer. This last one, unfortunately, I had the answer showing my bad. Um, okay, so for this, if I wanted to find the leg, I would have to take the hypotenuse of 4 radical 3, divide it by radical 2. 
rationalize my denominator, so I'm going to multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. So this now becomes 4 radical 6 over radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. And then remember, any of your numbers in front of your radical, 4 over 2, we want to simplify that if we can. In this case, we can. We couldn't simplify 5 over 2 unless we wanted to make it 2.5. But 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. And so our answer is then 2 radical 6. Notice I didn't divide the radical of 6 by 2. You can't do that. It can only be the numbers out in front. So now 30, 60, 90. So 45, 45, 90, there's only two things. It's either multiply by radical 2 or divide by radical 2. With a 30, 60, 90 triangle, it's definitely a little bit more involved. So what I'm going to show you, at least for starters here, on the math behind what these special uh, formulas are going to be, what the special rules are, is if I told you that, okay, the side opposite the 30 in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we're going to call that N. The side opposite the 30 is going to be the smallest side. We learned opposite sides of angle, uh, the opposite, the sides of the opposite angles are always uh, relative to each other. So the side opposite the 90 is going to be the greatest. The side opposite the 60 is going to be the medium sized side. And then the side opposite the 30 is always going to be the smallest. So we're going to call that N. But I am going to give you part of the special relationship in that the side of the hypotenuse, the side opposite the 90, is actually always twice the side opposite the 30. And if I give you that information, here's what's going to happen. If I wanted to solve for this missing side opposite the 60, let's say I use the Pythagorean theorem. A, I'm going to just call N. So N squared plus this side, I don't know, B squared is equal to 2N squared, right, the hypotenuse squared. So then if I started to simplify that out, I end up getting n squared plus b squared equals 4n squared. Now think about it. I want to solve for b, right? I want to set up, like, what's the relationship of that side opposite the 60? So I want to get b by itself. I would subtract n squared, and I would be left with b squared equals 3n squared. I would then want to just get b, so I would take the square root on both sides. And remember, taking the square root of a squared simplifies each other out. So then this becomes b equals, so the square root of 3 is just square root of 3. Square root of n squared is n, and so I'm just left with n and the square root of 3. Okay, so this means if I know a side, I know the side opposite the 30, to get to the hypotenuse, I simply double it. But if I know the side opposite the 30, to get the side opposite the 60, I multiply by radical 3. So in a 45, 45, 90, we multiply by radical 2, but in a 30, 60, 90, we multiply by radical 3, and this formula basically shows that. So to go from the short leg, so the short leg is n. To go from the short leg to the hypotenuse, we multiply by 2. To go from the short leg to the um, longer leg, the side opposite the 60, going from n to n radical 3, we just multiply by radical 3. To go from the long leg to the short leg would just be the opposite. So then you would divide by radical 3 instead. So if I gave you this length and I said, hey, what's the side opposite the 30? You would take that value, divide by radical 3 to just get the n. If I want to do the hypotenuse to the short leg, um, it's the opposite of up here. I would simply divide by 2. But now here's the problem. If you want to go from the hypotenuse to the longer leg or the longer leg to the hypotenuse, these sides here, going from n radical 3 to 2n or 2n to n radical 3. It's not going to be super clean. But what we can do is you can always just find the short leg first. So, you know, if I gave you the hypotenuse and I asked you to find the long leg, you could take the hypotenuse, divide it by 2, and then take that result and multiply it by radical 3. Same thing if I gave you the longer leg, you could divide it by radical 3, get this value, and then double it to get your side opposite the 90. Okay, so let's take a look. So the side opposite the 30, I always feel like is the biggest deal because that really controls everything, okay? The side opposite the 30. So if I give you the side opposite the 30, the four, then we know the side opposite the 90, the hypotenuse is just double it. So if the side opposite the 30 is four, then the hypotenuse is eight. And again, this always works for 30, 60, 90 triangles. It is a special relationship. And then y is my longer leg. And so I know I have to then take this 4, 
multiply it by radical three to get my longer leg across the 60, and so that would be four radical three. If I gave you the hypotenuse in this triangle here, then I could say, okay, well, the relationship between the hypotenuse and the side opposite the 30 is that I have to divide by two. So then that means X is five, okay? The side opposite the 30 is always half the hypotenuse. And then once I know that's five, then I can go from five to the longer leg by multiplying it by radical three. And so the longer leg Y is five radical three. Okay, here I'm actually given the longer leg, it's across from the 60. So I could find X first because I know that going from the longer leg to the shorter leg, you are going to divide by radical three. So that would actually mean that my um, side opposite the 30 is four. And then the side from opposite the 30 to the hypotenuse, you just double it to get eight. In this one here, I'm given the hypotenuse is 13. So I know then the side opposite the 30 is half of that 13. So X is 6.5. And then to go from the side opposite the 30 to the side opposite the 60, you multiply that value by radical three. Okay, so here I'm given the side opposite the 60. So if I wanna go from the side opposite the 60 to the side opposite the 30, I have to divide by radical three, right? So I'd have to do two radical five divided by radical three. We have to rationalize our denominator, so we multiply it by radical three over radical three. So now this becomes two radical 15 over radical three times radical three is just three. This is my simplified answer, okay? Two radical, three, uh, two radical 15 over three. And then once I know that this is two radical 15 over three, I would need to double it to get to my hypotenuse. So if I took this value and I doubled it, or I simply multiplied it by two, or let's say two over one, um, it would become four radical 15 over three. The last one here, uh, I'm given the side opposite the 30, so I'm given the smallest side. To go to the hypotenuse, I would double it, so I would take three radical two, double it, I would get six radical two. To get the y value, I'd have to take this side and multiply by radical three. So three radical two times radical three would end up giving me three radical six. Awesome, very good. Okay, so now here, triangle ABC is equilateral. BD is six. Find the perimeter of triangle ABC. So we've got a pretty cool problem here where we're given an equilateral triangle. So some things we have to then remember. If it's equilateral, that means that all of the angles here are 60 which means all of this is 60, which really actually means that, um, and if I have a right angle, if I have an altitude here, it means it's also a bisector. I've actually got two little 30, 60 triangles built in. And I'm told the side opposite the 60 is six. I wanna know the perimeter of this outside figure. so. There's a few things definitely to figure out. Well, if the side opposite the 60 is six, then if I wanted to find the side opposite the 30, DC, I would have to take the side opposite the 60 and to go from the side opposite the 60, the longer leg to the shorter leg of DC, I would have to take six and divide it by radical three. I need to rationalize my denominator. I end up with six radical three over three which simplifies to two radical three. So that tells me now that this side of DC is two radical three, which then of course means that this is two radical three. If I wanna find the perimeter of this triangle, um, well, of course, then it means that this entire side length here is four radical three, because I would just double it. And the perimeter, you know, there, if it's equilateral, all the sides are the same. So it's just four radical three times three, which means the entire perimeter of this triangle would be 12 radical three units, um, which is pretty cool. Now, the other thing you could say is, well, look, you know, if I figured out that the side opposite the 30 was two radical three, remember the relationship from the 30 to the hypotenuse is you double it, which would say that this side is four radical three. And then all the sides are four radical three which then of course, if you add that up, you're gonna get that 12 radical three, same idea, same idea. 
Okay, this problem here, the side of a regular hexagon is four units. What is the area of the rectangle? So we're given a hexagon. Something we need to remember about a hexagon is that what the angle sum theorem is. Um, the angle, the sum, angle sum theorem, so you know the sum is equal to 180 times n minus 2. So I've got six sides. If I plug in a 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 times 180 is 720. So it means the entire octagon has an interior angle measure of 720. Now divided by 6 means that each interior angle is 120. So these are all 120s. Which means that if those are all 120s, then this is a 60 degree angle, right? Because those are a linear pair, which means that this is 30. And so I've actually got these 30, 60, 90 triangles in each corner. And so I now have to use this information really carefully to figure out what the area of the entire rectangle would be. So I do know that the side length here is four. I do know that, but I need to figure out these sides, the sides of the 30, and then the sides of the 60. So if I know that this is four here, that's the hypotenuse, this is 30. So the side opposite the 30 would be half. So this is a length of two. So I know this is also two, this is two, this is two, this is four. The side opposite the 60 degrees is the side opposite the 30 multiplied by radical 3. So then this side is 2 radical 3, 2 radical 3, because they're all the same. And so now if I wanted to find the length, so the length of this figure is 2 plus 4 plus 2, which is the length of 8. The width of this rectangle is 2 radical 3 plus 2 radical 3 which is 4 radical 3. And then if I wanted to find the area, I would do 8 times 4 radical 3, and 8 times that 4 radical 3 would give me 32 radical 3 units squared. I know there's a lot of information in this video. Thank you so much for watching.